That Washington football team is really fucking good. Everything we do is going to be about winning. Okay, we're going to do things the right way, and that's the only way we're going to do them. Because if it doesn't help us, we're not doing it, man. That's just as simple as it gets. Win the Super Bowl. That's going to mean it, too. You know, I, I, one of the things that, that the only reason you become a head coach in this league, in my opinion, is to win. That's it. That's the bottom line. If you do it for any other reason, you're wrong. Hey, Washington football fans, welcome back. I know you guys are going to kill me in the comments for this one. So, before the brutal assault, could you please do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button for me having the courage to express my opinion, even though it might get me shipped to the loony bin? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button while you're at it, please. I'd appreciate it. And, uh, so here we go. First off, I love the prestige and respect Ron Rivera has brought to the Washington football team from a media standpoint. Because that's where we're seeing it come from the most. I love the the steady approach, you know, he's taken to building the team. I love how the defense played last year. I love the draft. I'm loving how the players from the draft are developing. I love how well our, our offense is playing. But our defense is clearly going through some problems. We made some... Nice upgrades, but we didn't anticipate that a couple small role players that we lost would result in such a big swing in our defensive production. William Jackson III is, in most people's opinions, a better cornerback than Ronald Darby in nearly every metric. And... We would see that more if we played him to his strength. Darby fit, you know, the zone coverage scheme better than William Jackson III. And since Jack Del Rio hasn't bothered adjusting at all, the defense is suffering for it. But the game planning isn't what I'm having the biggest problem with so far, even though I think it's terrible too. I think it's it, more personnel choices and player acquisitions are what's killing me. Choosing Bostick's leadership and IQ over Kevin Pierre-Lewis's coverage ability and athletic you know, athleticism was questionable. There are some other small, you know, role changes, but let's just say we have a few clear personnel problems that have made it a rough time for the defense so far. That all can, you know, can be expected at the same time, but you expect your coaching staff that's making millions of dollars to identify the areas in need of improvement and do what they can to make at least incremental improvements. Now, in the draft, we traded away uh, a pick from, from next year so we could get a long snapper in the sixth round. While Denzel Perryman was traded from the Panthers to the Raiders for a swap of a sixth rounder and a seventh rounder. Not even a full pick trade. Just, hey, let me move up one round. We'll give you Denzel Perryman. Perryman might not be a top tier linebacker, but just like KPL, he's a big step up from Bostic, at least in the coverage area. And 
that's where we had the most trouble last year, and we're having it even worse this year. Joe Schobert, another solid coverage linebacker, and all around better than Bostic, was acquired for a sixth round pick from the Steeler for the Steelers from the Jags. And Joe was an integral part of the Steelers game plan that short circuited Josh Allen and restored him to factory settings, you know, for their game. We picked up Daryl Roberts, who hasn't had a positively graded season in in the whole seven years of his career. We did that when Desmond King, at only 26 years old, was having trouble finding a home, you know, a season removed from pretty solid play after having multiple seasons of absolutely elite play as a nickelback in San Diego. He eventually landed with the Texans very late in free agency and, you know, when they went around and scooped up a bunch of mid, you know, mid-season trade bait for incredibly reasonable prices. And such a high-caliber player at a position we needed should have been a target. You know, he does his best work at Nickelback, but he shares all the position flex of Bobby McCain with his ability to, you know, be serviceable at safety as well. You know, Bobby McCain is actually making some good plays, you know, but we could have had both these guys on the roster for a total of $5 million. And we skipped out on the younger better player instead. You know, if it came down to choosing one of them, the, you know, 26-year-old absolute specialist at a position we need, Desmond King should have been the priority. Now that, you know, getting him through free agency has passed, I wouldn't even be mad if we traded for him. I'm sure just like all the Texans players, he's available for trade. That's pretty much why they signed up all these, you know, fringe guys. I really think we need to go for it. We're not doing anything else. Desmond King would pit, fit the defense perfectly. We need to do something. You know, all those decisions I, I was just talking about, though, were made before the season started. So I guess they can be forgiven. But since the season has started, we've identified some areas of weakness. And just this week, we've also lost a good bit of players to injury. We have, you know, we've had some very spotty play at cornerback. And even if we didn't, there was an opportunity to give up very little in exchange for a top 10 pick cornerback from last year. Cornerback is a very highly valued position. So even if we weren't having trouble, it still would have been a good, you know, shot to take. Now, a lot of people want to call into question why a guy like that would be getting traded so soon. But I say, never look a gift horse in the mouth. He showed some flashes in his first year. Cornerbacks usually don't hit their stride until year three. But being that developing players seems to be the one thing we are actually doing well, I say chase the high potential guy. Especially when he was a pick from a previous regime and he showed promise. You know, I would chalk up the why they want to trade him to the fact that they have a new coach and he wants his guy. Especially when you've seen the tape that this guy was good. Realizing, especially that we had the same ammo used to acquire him is even more stressful. Ricky Seals-Jones came in the league four years ago as an undrafted free agent, just like Dan Arnold. He he bounced around a bit, just like Dan Arnold. Except Ricky Seals-Jones has been considerably more productive. And 
he's a much better receiving threat, and that's what the Jags were looking for to help out Lawrence. So, basically, a guy we signed off the streets and a third rounder for a top 10 pick from last year and a fifth rounder in return, and we weren't in on that deal. You know, I'm not ready to call for Ron's job. I think he's, you know, all around he's doing a good job. But I believe, I believe in him as a coach, but Mayhew and Herney, maybe? I don't, I'm not too sure that they're doing a great job. It just seems like they're completely asleep at the wheel. Coverage at the linebacker position has been a huge problem last year and this year. Bostic, you know, wasn't helping proving it much, but now that he's gone, we're even weaker at the position. Again, it seems the hand of God reaches out to offer us a hand with the Cowboys releasing 26-year-old Pro Bowl top 10 caliber linebacker Jalen Smith. And he ends up going to Green Bay for orthodontist money. I know Dallas is paying him his seven mils, so money wasn't you know an issue, but come on. People are saying we tried, but he wanted to go to Green Bay. Then we weren't trying hard enough. And that brings me to the title of the video. Ron's plan has me missing old Dan. I know people love to call Snyder an idiot for some of the moves he made, but he always did it to help the team. And if Dan wanted a guy, he got the guy. Maybe you don't let him make the personnel decisions. But if it's true that we tried and failed, then you need to let old Danny boy step in on a situation like that. Maybe if you decide you want a guy, you use your boss's skills and, and, and send him to get him. Went to Green Bay for one year and 700000 we would have sh- we should have sent Dan in there to big dick the deal. What's that? You're already getting paid seven million a year from Dallas. How about another seven million a year on top of that? We'll tag on three years and thirty two mil at the end, just to show you how much we believe in you, and how much we want you in Washington. We want you there to light a fire, to be a leader on the defense, on a defense that's right on the edge of greatness. Help our rookie first rounder develop to be your partner in crime in the middle of the field. We want you to come and be the quarterback of this defense and show everybody else that doubted you how wrong they were twice a year. We think all that decline talk was garbage. What we saw was an elite player that was made to feel unwanted. A team leader on the field and a motivator that was taken for granted. Here in Washington, you don't have to worry about any of that. We want you to lead this defense into the future. They say defenses don't win championships anymore, but we think with you leading this group of talented young men out on the field, we can prove them all wrong. Now you can go to Green Bay for pocket change, be one of three good pieces on that defense, and hope you're there for Aaron Rodgers' last hurrah, then what? We want you to be a part of the dynasty we're trying to build. We really believe we're close, and we just need a special young man like you to put us over the top. What do you say? Young, Allen, Payne, Sweat, Jamin Davis, and you in the middle of the field directing traffic and making the kind of elite, big-time plays only you can. Come on, shake my hand, let's get on the jet and head to the Empire Club. Something like that. Anything like that. I don't know. Money and a little speech. I feel like if they actually did go to him, it was on some, like, soft Ron Rivera bullshit, like, 
hey, we'd really be interested in having you come play for us. And then Jalen was like, I don't know. I was thinking about going to Green Bay. And Ron was all like, fiddlesticks. Okay, well, good luck and have a great time in Green Bay. And Ron had to do it because Mayhew tore his rotator cuff, patting himself on the back for bringing uh, Air Flowers back. And now he's out for the season. And not Flowers, Mayhew for patting himself on the back. I'm pretty much done with this whole narrative about Ron's plan and Ron's culture and him being here somehow making players want to come here that wouldn't have in the past. Since he's been here, what examples do we have of that? We've played at least market value for everybody we brought. Ronald Darby didn't, Darby didn't want to stick around for the culture. He took the money and went to Denver. Is it just old Carolina players that we get? Because Heineke is the best one so far. And that's the one Scott Turner for, you know, seeing something in him. Jury's out on Samuel. Being that he's banged up after his debut in week four. And we still pretty much paid him market price. We got Thomas Davis. A roster spot and a paycheck to be a coach on the field last year that was barely on the field. Ron's culture couldn't land Amari Cooper. It didn't entice Byron Jones. Hell, Ron couldn't even land his former player, James Bradbury. That already knew how well he fit into Ron's defense. And he chose Ron's new division rival instead. He went to New York. Dan Snyder gets the blame for all the bad free agent deals, you know, the Hainsworths, the Sanders, the Trotters, even Bruce Smith, who, while he was overpaid, I thought he played good for us. But nobody ever brings up, you know, Dan was also at the helm when we got D'Angelo Hall, Marcus Washington, Pierre Garçon, Deshaun Jackson, Casey Robach, Andre Carter, Burgundy and Gold legend, London Fletcher. Nobody ever talks about that stuff. Now, I'm not saying we go back to Dan willy-nilly breaking the bank on the biggest name out there. And I know Snyder has tef- you know, technically stepped down from the football side because of the legal issues. What I'm saying is when you know you need a guy, you go to Dan and tell him to make it happen. Tap into the one area that the ball shines for, you know, for better or worse. That's where he shines. I can't think of many guys Dan personally targeted and didn't get. You know, just saying. We're looking like punks out there when it comes to land and talent. It was supposed to be something about, you know, the culture enticing people, but everybody has turned us down. <laughs> Every, you know, outside of guys we had a relationship with already or William Jackson who got paid what he would have got paid anywhere else. So actually it's 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 looking like the opposite is true. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Am I batshit crazy for missing any involvement from the most hated owner in sports? And uh please like the video if you like the video and subscribe, turn on notification bells for more of my takes on the Washington football team. And if you watch this far I love you guys. Peace.